Hey guys, what's up? It's AppOSX here, and today I will be doing a full-on descriptive review of the brand new iPhone 4S. I've had the iPhone 4S since October 14th, which was launch day, so that means I've had about three weeks to play with this device, and I think I've gotten a good hold of what it does well and what it doesn't do well, and basically just all of the features that it has to offer. I picked up the 16 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte AT&T model, as you can see right there, and obviously got the color white. However, this review covers all models of the iPhone, whether it be Verizon, Sprint, or AT&T, because they're obviously now all one in the same. So let's go ahead and get right into the review. The first thing we'll talk about is hardware. In terms of hardware in the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 4S has undergone very, very little changes to its exterior. The interior is another story, which we'll get to in the next part of the review. But on the outside, the iPhone 4S looks exactly the same. That's because the iPhone 4S has the exact same dimensions, you know, width, height, and depth as the iPhone 4. So, as a result, the iPhone 4S has the same glass front and back as the iPhone 4, um, that it'll still break just as easily, unfortunately. However, I think I actually like the design. Um, you have your camera, and you have your antenna on the side that kind of wraps around, and then you still have that gorgeous retina display on the front that's still at 3.5 inches, obviously no screen size change. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the hardware. At the top, we have our same headphone jack right there. And then we have our sleep wake button at the top right hand corner of our device. We have an antenna right here, a little break. We have your SIM card slot. We have another antenna on the bottom. We have our speaker. Then we have our 30 pin dock connector and our microphone. On the left side we have an antenna. And then we have our volume down, volume up, and our silent switch or our mute switch. And then one more antenna. Lacking from the iPhone 4S that was on the iPhone 4 is an antenna on the top of the phone. That is no longer there probably due to antenna gate reasons or something like that. And then if you can see it, there's another small microphone right there, but it's very hard to see. So on the outside, the iPhone 4S looks exactly the same as the iPhone 4. Um, of course, on the inside is where the most of the changes have occurred. So let's go ahead and talk about the changed internals. While the iPhone 4S has received little changes on the outside, the iPhone 4S has received a number of internal upgrades that really enhance the speed of the device, beginning with the dual-core A5 chip. The dual-core A5 chip really makes scrolling and loading web pages so much quicker than on the iPhone 4 and on the iPhone 3GS. You'll notice it more on uh, content-heavy websites, whereas mobile sites will probably load about the same time as an iPhone 4 or iPhone 3GS just because they have so little to process, but if you load a uh, full site like the Engadget full site right here, you'll see how much quicker it loads on the iPhone 4S than on the iPhone 4. You'll also notice it just in general applications like Tweetbot. Scrolling has greatly improved and the whole user interface is so much smoother on the iPhone 4S than it is on the iPhone 4 or any previous device. The biggest difference you'll see in performance is with games, which Apple claims to be like a nine times improved graphical performance. So if you're an avid game player or you play games like Real Racing, Infinity Plate, or any of those really uh, heavy games, um, you will notice a big difference in speed. Um, I have a iPhone 4S versus iPhone 3GS video coming soon to kind of show you the speed difference in games like this that the A5 chip really helps with. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll post the link in the description once it's up. But that's the A5 chip, and it's by far one of the biggest upgrades to the iPhone 4S. And of course, it's dual core. So, you know, you get that additional core. Next thing we'll talk about here is the World uh, Qualcomm chip, which is not really a big deal for me, but I'd just like to touch on it quickly. Um, the World chip now allows you to use one iPhone on both CDMA and GSM networks, depending on where you travel in the world. This way, you no longer have to have an AT&T phone and a Verizon phone or a CDMA phone and a GSM phone. This chip inside can run on both networks. That's a very big deal breaker for a lot of people who travel around the world, but for me, who never leaves the country, um, this phone or that chip really is of no importance to me. Next up here, we have the new antenna system, which increases connectivity and has greatly dropped the amount of, or greatly reduced the number of drop calls on my iPhone 4S as compared with my iPhone 4. The antenna um, doesn't really have the death grip issue as much. Of course, it's still possible to do, but it is much harder than the iPhone 4. And the antenna also gives support for 4G data speeds as long as you're on AT&T's network. Those are unfortunately not supported on Verizon's or Sprint's network. It seems to be an AT&T exclusive. But since I have AT&T, um, the data speeds over 3G have greatly increased. So if you have AT&T, this can also be a big deal. Next up, we have the louder speaker, which... 
I can't really do on a YouTube video because of copyright violations. Um, basically, the speaker is, I'd say, about 30% louder than the iPhone 4s. Um, it's also a little bit clearer, but really, it's just a lot louder than the iPhone 4s. Um, just a tip, don't ever blare your iPhone 4S all the way up with the volume. Sometimes that can actually break the speaker and reduce quality. But other than that, the iPhone 4S speaker is great. Next up here, we'll talk about the cameras on the brand new iPhone 4S. Of course, there's still front-facing camera and the all-new rear-facing camera. Really quickly, on the front-facing camera, there are no changes. It's still standard VGA uh, FaceTime camera, so no changes on the front camera. But on the back camera, that is where all the changes occurred, and there have been a lot of changes. The back camera is now 8 megapixels as compared with 5 has an additional lens and a larger aperture which allows more light to come in to the phone to get you better picture quality, especially in low light situations. So we launch up the camera here, we can see just how quickly the camera loads as compared with the iPhone 4, and the pictures that it takes are absolutely amazing. If you'd like to view some pictures, I will post a link to one of my blogs or a blog post on my website that will basically just show you some pictures taken with the iPhone 4S. Um, but this picture quality is absolutely stunning um, with its 8 megapixel camera and 1080p video is just as impressive because now you can take full 1080p video. Yes, you heard that. 1080p video on your iPhone 4S um, as compared with 720p on the iPhone 4. So overall, the iPhone 4S's camera is much better than the iPhone 4's in my opinion, but it's not like the iPhone 4's was that bad of a camera. But definitely the larger aperture, video stabilization, and 1080p video recording seem to be the big deal breakers for many people. Let's go ahead and talk about iOS 5. I'm sure many of you guys have already played around with or seen iOS 5 on their personal iOS devices, whether it be an iPhone 4S or not, but iOS 5 on the iPhone 4S is clearly optimized for the iPhone 4S because the animations um, of basically pulling down your notification center, uh, you know, iMessage and everything just seems to work really well on the iPhone 4S. Of course, the big deal is the notification center, which greatly helps um, a lot of people, particularly me, with keeping up with notifications. And of course, you have this nice weather widget and this stock widget right here. Um, notification center and iMessage, where you can basically uh, message between iPhones, iPod Touches, and iPads for free, also seems to be a big deal breaker. And of course, there's also iCloud, which iCloud backs up your data and syncs it across multiple devices. But the biggest deal on iOS 5 for the iPhone 4S is definitely Siri. And if you haven't checked out my video on Siri, go ahead and check that out because I'm just going to briefly touch on it here. But Siri is basically a really cool personal assistant that is a whole lot smarter than voice control on iOS 3. So I'll just do a quick demonstration here and... What's the weather? Or just what's the weather like? I just said what's the weather and hopefully it'll pick up on it here. And uh, it will tell me... Here's the forecast for today through this Wednesday. And there it goes. Of course, it has a little bit of an, a annoying voice, but it's really fun to ask it dumb questions. And a lot of those questions are in that video in the description. I guess I'll also put an annotation right there. Um, you can go ahead and click that and check it out with my Siri stuff. Overall, iOS 5 is very snappy. Um, I've had very little bugs with um, iOS 5 on my iPhone 4S. There has been a Safari bug where it takes a long time to type in characters when you're going to a web address. But other than that, Apple definitely optimized iOS for the iPhone 4S. Let's go ahead and touch up on our last subject. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to talk about the battery life on the iPhone 4S. The iPhone 4S has essentially the same battery technical specifications that Apple provides as the iPhone 4, except for two key areas. The iPhone 4S does receive an additional hour of talk time over 3G, so that's a plus, but the negative side is that the iPhone 4S loses 100 hours of standby time, whereas the iPhone 3GS got, or the iPhone 4, got 300 hours of standby time, the iPhone 4S only gets 200 hours of standby time, so that's a decrease of 100 hours. Now, my personal experience, that hasn't been too big of a deal considering I charge my phone every day, and it's never... I never go 200 hours without using it or anything like that. So the 200 hours of standby time doesn't really affect me, but if it does affect you, I'd recommend getting a Mophie juice pack or something like that. But in my personal experience, the battery life has not been too bad. So overall, the battery on the iPhone 4S is good, but it definitely could have been better. For the last part of this review, I'd like to just give potential iPhone 4S buyers some buying advice. 
Um, of course, it's just my opinion, and ultimately, the decision is up to you. But here's what I have to offer in terms of what I think. If you currently have an iPhone 4, depend, it doesn't really matter on how long you've had it for, but if you currently have an iPhone 4, I would recommend staying with the iPhone 4 until the next generation iPhone, presumably the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 5, whatever the next generation iPhone is called, I would recommend waiting till that because it likely, it'll likely have a new design and of course a lot of other new cool features as every iPhone does. But the iPhone 4 is not that much different from the iPhone 4S, of course, except for the camera, the dual core A5 chip in Siri, just to name a few. So if you're not an avid photographer or shooting a lot of video or using Siri a lot, or you just don't think you'll use it, or if you're not playing games, or you just don't need the speed, then the iPhone 4 will still work excellently for you, because the iPhone 4 is by no means a slouch. It still has a great camera, a great processor, and a lot of other good features like iCloud and uh, stuff like that that of course is on iOS 5. So if you have an iPhone 4, I would definitely recommend waiting till the next generation iPhone, unless of course you can financially support it. If you have an iPhone 3GS like I have here, I would 100% recommend upgrading without a doubt unless you really want to wait for that redesign because the redesign will not come for about another year and the iPhone 4S is still a great phone right now. It's basically one of the best on the market and the, considering the iPhone 4, not even the iPhone 4S was a huge upgrade from this phone in terms of camera quality and processor speed and all that then the iPhone 4S is an even better upgrade than the iPhone 4 was to the iPhone 3GS. So that's just some buying advice. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave it in the section below. Overall, I think I'd give this phone a score of a 9.5 out of 10. And the reason I give it that 9.5 instead of a 10 out of 10 is just because of the battery life and the fact that the iPhone 4S does get a little heated up when you start using the device a lot. But other than that, the iPhone 4S is such a good phone. It is so quick iOS 5, iCloud, Siri is super fun to play with, the camera is awesome, there are just so many features and changes that have gone into this iPhone 4S that still make it one of the best phones, if not the best phone, on the market right now. I know a lot of people are disappointed with no design change, no bigger screen size, but I still think it's a great phone, and if you guys really want the bigger screen size and design, it'll likely come next year, so if you want to wait till that, wait for that. But other than that, I definitely give it a 9.5 out of 10. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe somewhere up there for more videos, reviews, and jailbreak tweaks. Also, follow me on Twitter at iAppOSX. Also, add me on Game Center. I'm not sure if I have any friends slots.